Robert, you mentioned previously that you would not have embarked on Kids for Cash if you could not tell the victim story as well as the so-called villain story. So can you recount to us what it was like the day you actually spoke to Judge Chivarella? And I mean, where were you? What was it like when you approached him to be in this film? Well, I think um, to start, we, we really weren't going to make the movie unless we could tell from the villain and victim's point of view, because I think that's like the classic story. You know, and, and almost from the beginning, it seemed like a tale right out of the Charles Dickens book, you know, and, and, and so uh, the idea was to see if we could approach him. In fact, my producing partner and I thought, there's no way we're going to get these judges to talk. Why would they? They're, they're about to undertake a federal prosecution. Why would they do it? But um, I didn't know them, but I knew of them, and I was able to get uh, a meeting with one of the judges, Judge Chivarella, and it was, my pitch was simple. I said, listen, this is a one-dimensional story in the media. You just, maybe perhaps all your life, were scheming to, you know, to, for this to happen, you know, to raise all this, uh, to put kids away for, for money. And, and I don't think it happened that way, but it, there must be another side to this whole story. And, and the judge says, well, of course there is. There's always a side, but nobody wants to hear it. I'm like, well, I'm interested in hearing it. But, we're, but, but if you agree to, to work with us, we're going to tell the story from both perspectives and go wherever it goes. And neither judge knew that they were being filmed? Neither judge, by agreement, knew that they were being filmed, uh, but I can't be sure that they didn't talk among themselves. I, I'm not sure. Uh, well, they were friends in the very beginning. Oh, sure. And they were enemies at the end. It's hard to know in between if they had um, talked to each other. I don't know. Right. So where was the first meeting with Judge Chivarella? Where did it take place? First meeting was in his daughter's home. Wow. Because uh, at this point, Judge Chivarella had you know, sold his home. So he's living with his daughter. So the first me a meeting was there, and uh, you know, because he was kind of holed up there. I mean, he he didn't go out because when he went out, people would mob him. Oh wow! So it was that he was that well known even by face. Oh, oh yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, we had to sneak our equipment into the into the condo that he was living in because, you know, people would see like, what are they doing? Plus the fact that we didn't want anyone to find out that he was being interviewed. Um, uh, no one. And, and he said in particular, the other judge did too, that he didn't want his lawyer to know either. And so it was kind of a burden we had to make sure that we brought our crews in from New York and, you know, big crew too, a lot of equipment. How, do we, how are we going to get all this into your place? But we had to do it so that, you know, neighbors and others didn't know what we were doing. And how did you do that? Just putting stuff in bags? Or? Yeah, just making, you know, like small, like going in with, you know, and look, having lookouts really sure. to see, like make sure that people didn't know that we were around and just take stuff in pieces at a time. Show up in multiple vehicles, park different places, you know, so that we didn't have a big crew of people walking into the place. And somehow we did it. It's just amazing to me too that, that no one knew that we were, we were filming them. And how many meetings did you have with him? Um, we had... You know, maybe um, seven or eight interviews over the course of years with um, with the judges in different places. They weren't all in the same spot. 